Archetypes are what Carl Jung called the fundamental units of the human mind. To simply put it, an archetype is a set of psychological patterns within a person's psyche. Archetypes are part of the collective unconsciousness. The collective unconsciousness consists of cognitive categories which are not unique to the individual, meaning the collective unconsciousness is shared by us all. This is why these archetypes resonate deeply with an audience and creates very strong feelings and response. Every character you see on television and in films behaves and responds to the environment around them in the expression of an archetype. The shadow is the negative tendency of the archetype. It is a psychological trap that a person can fall into when playing that role or living out that psychology. In this video I'm going to talk about the nine main archetypes used in film and television. The King or Father This archetype leads their family or people with wisdom, foresight and resolve so that they can grow and succeed. The most famous example of this would be Darth Vader. Anakin uses his wisdom and foresight to protect the ones around him in the war against the Separatists. However, the shadow of this archetype is that they can force their wife, children or people to act accordingly to a strict and oppressive set of rules and can remove themselves entirely from the emotional realm of their family. When Anakin joins the dark side, he tries to persuade his lover Padme and his best friend Obi-Wan to act accordingly to his new ideology. When they don't, he separates himself entirely from the emotional realm of his family and people and begins destroying everyone who doesn't follow his new set of rules. The queen or mother provides the care and protective shell within the child or her people so that they can grow. An example of this is Marion and Ladybird. We see Marion really care about the relationship with Ladybird and wanting what's best for her even if it doesn't always come across that way. However, the shadow of a queen or mother is that they can be protective and controlling. They can use guilt or shame to hold back the child and guarantee her own comfort. The trickster uses confidence, trickery and a way of words to get what he wants. This is one of the most popular archetypes in modern storytelling due to how compelling a well-written trickster can be. There are loads of examples, but the most famous trickster in recent times is the Joker. He is extremely intelligent and uses this to his advantage when dealing with enemies. The weakness of a trickster is that they can become overconfident in their abilities and a complete liar who only looks out for themselves. The artist defies excellence for people, or negatively shows them what doesn't work. Steve Jobs has an idea of the future for Apple and technology and doesn't settle for anything less than the best. He also isn't afraid to show the ugliness in what appears to be beautiful in other people's eyes. However, they can be the ultimate fascist, insisting on perfection and complete control over their vision. They can turn in everything so that nothing has value. For example, Steve Jobs destroys the products that Apple were working on when he's reassigned as CEO and does not acknowledge the Apple II team when the product is no longer important to the company. This is a practical enforcer of what is right. Mark Zuckerberg is a shadowed warrior in the social network. In Mark's eyes, he is doing what is right. He was the one who saw the potential to create the world's largest social network, connecting billions around the world. Even after countless enemies try to challenge him and take Facebook from him, he still ends up on top. The shadow of the warrior is that they can live according to the motto of kill or be killed. They believe whatever is weak must be destroyed. When Mark sees no use for someone, he gets rid of them. An example of this is when Eduardo doesn't move to California with Mark in the summer and freezes the account, nearly jeopardizing the website. Mark goes behind his back and tricks Eduardo into diluting the shares in the company to basically none. The rebel has the courage to stand out from the crowd and act against the system that is enslaving people. Daenerys from Game of Thrones is an example of this archetype. The inherent weakness of a rebel is that they often cannot provide a better alternative, so they end up destroying the system or society. The lover provides the care, understanding and sensuality that can make someone a complete and happy person. However, the lover can lose themselves in the other and force the other to stand in their shadow. There are many examples of this archetype in film, with Rick from Casablanca being a prime example. The teacher passes on knowledge and wisdom so that people can live better lives and society can improve. Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs is an example of this archetype. However, they can force students to think a certain way for the glory of himself rather than the glory of his ideas. A shaman is someone who can make visible the deeper reality behind the senses and can balance and control the larger hidden forces of the natural world. 
An example of this is Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. Saruman in The Lord of the Rings is an example of a shadow channel. He can manipulate the deeper reality to enslave others and destroy the natural order. If you want to learn more about this topic, I recommend reading The Archetypes and the Collective Unconsciousness by Carl Jung and The Anatomy of Story by John Truby. These are just some of the main and most popular archetypes used in film, but there are lots of different archetypes out there. By using archetypes in stories, we give the characters weight very quickly, because each archetype expresses personality patterns that the audience recognises and relates to.